Welcome back to our episode five discussion of season two of House of the Dragon. What what are your initial thoughts on this episode? I think I like it more than the others. I think it's my favorite. Oh, nice. Um, which is surprising considering from the last episode, but this is going back to more of what Game of Thrones was than True. anything. Mm-mm. There's like a lot of political maneuvering in this episode. This is what made me fall in love with Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of it? I I thought it was really good. I enjoyed most of the scenes. I probably have, I'm going to say like more criticisms of this episode than the previous ones. So Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it's like my favorite episode, but I still like really enjoyed it. And yeah, I'm overall enjoying this season a lot. It's definitely picking up. I'm hoping, I have more faith now that it's going to end really well. Mm-hmm. So I know you said you had a lot of <laughs> thoughts about Damon. Do you want to start there? Yeah, let's start with Damon. What the fuck is going on with Damon? <laughs> Where are the war crimes? Literally, he's not being true to it. I was literally talking to an author friend of mine about this. And um, today, and we were just like, where the fuck are the war crimes? What is he doing? He's not acting like Damon. I mean, he's he's having other people do things for him, I guess, because the whole thing between like the Blackwoods and the Brackens, he's because he basically said like, oh, I'm not going to get involved in that. A king can't do that. But he's like instigating things, I guess. But yeah, he hasn't really done a whole lot he's mostly just like haunted by visions yeah which is so repetitive and actually in the books he's immune to the witch's power so oh. i don't know why yeah i don't know why they went with this but this way i don't know um but where he's sitting on his dragon and the guys are like i'd rather burn than bend the knee i was really hoping he was just going to say tracaris and just burn him and then oh, everybody else kind of goes was. Yeah, that's what I thought though, because that's in with his character. That is what he would do. But they didn't. And I understand the whole line of like, you know, they are the men you want. But at the same time, I'm like, well, you're not going to get them. But then he never went into battle either. I kind of thought you have a dragon. So why don't you go into battle and fight them that way? But then he got the the, the other guys, the Blackwoods or the Brackens. I can't remember which one were on, were on his side. But anyway to kidnap their wives and children and i'm like well that is the damon i know but what but why was he doing i understand like maybe because he didn't want a king to be seen doing it but when the hell has damon ever cared about what his people think he does yeah no i'm saying like i want that kind of you know and the repetitiveness of going down and down like we understand this witch is in his head we understand he's feeling grief about this kind of stuff and his subconscious is going on. But I'm like, there's this enough now? One or two scenes was enough to show that and then move on. Well, I mean, I do I do see what you're saying about it being repetitive. I didn't mind it. I'm kind of intrigued by the visions and what's going to happen. But it did kind of feel like we're not really progressing very far in his story. Like we, we are doing the same thing. Like we haven't really moved beyond that. The only thing is maybe Damon is trying to do more things near Heron Hall. He's trying to like recruit both the Brackens and the Blackwoods and um, seeing even by the end of the episode or the end of our storyline with him, like they come and they're like, oh, we're never going to serve you, like screw you. I feel like Damon is like losing control. I And I feel like that's a very much a theme of this season so far is like people are like trying to take power, but they're also like having trouble um, keeping the like, Having having power of those around them, they're like losing control of those around them. Yeah, yeah, I see that. I just, I still want to see Damon do war crimes. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like when you look, stop. When you look at like season one compared to now, it's like a completely different character. That's true because he was very active in season one. He was very active, very much taking what he wanted. He took Rhaenyra. When you think about it, like he groomed her and then it's like, I'm going to take her because 
again, one, he kind of liked Rhaenyra, but two, she was his pathway to becoming king. Mm -hmm. So there's that aspect. He also stole the dragon egg and, like, made up a story about him getting married and, like, all of that stuff. So, yeah, he was, like, very active in season one. Yeah, and in this, he's just not... What I would have loved to see, right, is... Okay, he has this weird, weird scene, and we're talking about the mother sex scene in a minute, because... (laughs) He has this, obviously, this dream sequence. I would love him to kind of go, it's your fault to Alice. And then, you know, pin her up against the wall, threaten to kill her. And then somebody else walk in and calm him down. And then she kind of walks off free. Right. That would be because that's showing him understanding and showing more stakes, especially for her and for him. Like what would happen when she does go? Because, you know, and then you take the curse of Harrenhal. Like, you know, I fully believe he's, he is going to die there. That's what they said in the prophecy. It's probably going to happen. So, and all that, it's just like, oh, just give me more Damon being, do, being doing war crimes and killing people. The thing about Alice um, that I find interesting is, because I was someone who said initially, I was like, is she real or is she a ghost? Yeah. This is the first episode where we've seen anyone else even acknowledge Alice because uh, I don't remember the name of the guy who like was running here in Hall before Damon came there. This, but yeah, he, this he walks in when Damon and Alice are in the room together and he looks over at her. So that's like the first time another character has acknowledged her. I think you could still go with she's a ghost because maybe he was looking at like what is Damon looking at? But I think maybe the show's not actually going with, like, she is a ghost. So I think what you're saying, yeah. because if she's a ghost and he's, like, threatening a ghost and someone walks in, they might not see her. But uh, if she's real, if she's actually there, like, that makes more sense. That would be, that would be like, a really good scene, though. Mm-hmm. Like, she could make herself, people believe that she's not there. But that's by the by. Um, it, she's, she's in the books. So... I kind of think, and the way the book is told, it's a historical ret- like telling, it's a textbook kind of thing. So it is, I do believe she is, she is real and she's kind of witch. Um, okay. <laughs> that is that that case of it. And, you know, I followed a few people who have read, I have almost to the point where, where it, it's based off of in the books. But, um, yeah, a few people have, have said she is there. And it does, you know, they do say it is a little bit different. So to what they've gone with and I do question the reason why they've gone with this direction with Damon because like it doesn't seem like Damon and the whole reason why we liked Damon in season one was because he was just so ruthless and willing to do anything to get what he wanted so not like yeah that. I mean and he's still throwing around his weight of like oh I am the king but he's not really yeah. like doing a whole lot he's, he's mostly no, just being haunted by visions yeah it's not really being proactive. He's yeah. rebuilding Harrenhal. Like, there's going to be an army come through. And then, you know, obviously, they win the battle. And then you have the people come up saying that that, that the other people are uh, ruining, like, um, I don't know, I can't remember what, what they said, but they were basically saying they're ruining people and killing people and stuff like this. Because the Brackens and the Blackwoods just don't get on. And then Damon just kind of didn't really do jack shit. Whereas I kind of would have expected him to kind of go, who's done what? Kill one person, kill another. Anybody else says it again, I'm just going to slaughter you. And I have a dragon. And that kind of bends them to his will a little bit. It would be a very strenuous alliance, but he would have an army. Yeah, he didn't even threaten his dragon there. (laughs) No. So I'm kind of just like, bear in mind, he rode the dragon to meet with with the head guy, the lord. And the dragon and, and didn't do anything with the dragon. I'm like, well, he's just called your bluff, and now you are in a weaker position. So when somebody calls your bluff, you just have to go fuck it and commit and do it. And he just he just didn't do that. Yeah. Which I'm like, why? Why? It would have been so cool, but anyway, we didn't get that. I'm holding out hope for the next few episodes, but who knows? I have a feeling though when they are going to end up. Um, killing Damon because I have a suspicion that's going to happen at Harrenhal. It's going to be the weakest ass death ever. (laughs) That's just my fear. Yeah. But what did you think about the sex scene? Kind of the sex scene. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because it's not until the very end of the scene that she's like, says my son and it was just like, What? What? Yeah. Why are we well, doing that? Well, Damon never met his mum. 
So, and I heard a theory that, which would make it more interesting, he was actually sleeping with the witch and the witch was making him see his mother. That would make a lot of sense. That would make a lot of sense. And I kind of wish, but I wish they'd give us just a little bit more of a hint of something that would lead to that kind of way. Because that would make things far more interesting. Yeah. But I don't I don't know. We'll have to wait and see if that happens. Well, I don't really know. It was and just, I do feel yeah. like they are making it like the witch is the one giving him these visions. And pretty yeah. much every scene, whenever he comes out of the vision, she is standing there. So they would make a lot of sense. And, okay, hmm. because we could have jumped in. We don't know exactly, because whenever he comes out of that vision, he's, like, sitting at the table eating. Yes. Yeah, I think that's more of, like, a time jump kind of thing. But then again, you get the whole, like, but again, you could uh, allude this to being just, like, it's constantly playing on his mind. Um, but he's not with it, especially when they come into the table and, like, say, like, oh, you know, all of this happening and stuff so it's a bit like well i really hope they do go down that route because that would be really interesting if it was just another vision from her for no apparent reason i'd be like a bit like what what yeah but oh, i don't know i don't know it's i'm holding out hope for war crimes from damon I really how know. how young was damon when his mom died i well young enough not to i I don't think it was at birth. I think it was pretty close after. So I think he was still young enough to not met, really have met her or remember anything. Because well, basically in the vision, she was like, you were my favorite child. Too bad you were born second. Uh, you would be the better king, all of that. And I'm not sure if that's something his mom, like if his mom, if he, if his mom died when he was super young, is that something his mom would even say? It depends on the reasoning for it, because it depends if it's actually Alice saying it in the vision to make him like that. But yeah, I've only really heard, again, I've not gotten to the point in the book. I've just sort of heard what a few other people have said about it. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, such and such. He'd actually never met his mum. So I was like, oh, OK. So I don't quite know what happened. I don't know if she had the baby, then had to leave and leave him to be raised up by his father or what happened. Or I, I don't know. Um, but I'm hoping I can get to that point soon. <laughs> in the book and I can definitely tell you everything that's happening in the book because the book is really fucking interesting like don't go into the book without reading Game of Thrones it's a proper fan kind of you can mm -hmm. but it's like a it's a fan book kind of thing I I like that theory and I'm I'm intrigued if they'll like actually do more with that because I think that makes a lot of sense it does and um I remember opening this episode eating dinner and going oh Halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> I understand why they did it, but like charred and uh, armor stuck to skin. I was uh, like, that is, that is pretty grim. Oh, yeah. That is pretty grim. Um, I liked it. Although there is one flaw in it. There's no gambeson underneath the armor where there would be. So it wouldn't be the armor stuck to the skin. And also he'd be like burnt to a crisp because the armor gets hot. It would be um, gambeson and stuff like that. But I can see why they did it for like shock factor. So, mm -hmm. you know, well, if, we, if we want to move to King's Landing stuff, I so the first scene we see in King's Landing is them parading the dragon head through the streets, and I thought that was a really interesting. I scene. loved that, and yeah. like how it still kind of smoked as well. That was very like we have taken them like quite a few days to get to King's Landing, which also makes me question why the hell didn't Aemon fly Aegon to King's Landing to see the Maesters on Vega? Why did they travel him in a box to the army? Because he probably would have died. It's a good mm. point. It's a good point. Other than Aemon didn't want to because he wants to be king. Yeah, there is that, but also it's kind of you've got all the other people around him, and he has to show some kind of face. So if everybody's kind of like the king is dead and all they're like dying, that would be the one thing that he'd, I don't know, he'd probably kind of yeah do it, and then but then again that also gives him more of an opportunity to actually make sure he does die from his wounds. That's true. So that's my question: Why didn't he do? Well, but anyway, do you think? Do you think Kristen Cole suspects that Eamon would have killed? Or did okay. He he said Dracaris 
knowing Aegon was right there. And yeah. his army would have seen that? Possibly yes and no. Because, I mean, bearing in mind, they were fighting a battle down below as well. So there are things that could distract them. So you can have that as a little bit of a possibly. But I do think Kristen Cole is suspicious. I do think yeah, well, he's kind of like... Kristen Cole came across Aemon near Aegon and Aemon had his sword out. So I think Kristen Cole is suspicious. So maybe Kristen Cole would have said, no, we'll take him back because he doesn't want him alone with Aemon. I mean, he could have done. It just would have been the easiest way to get him to heal quickly. It's just one of the things that I probably would have just thought. But I, yeah, that could have easily been done. But then, you know, you could have easily died on the travels because, you know, how are you going to feed him? <laughs> and his armor was still stuck in the all of this so but it, it is it is what it is um i do like how allison went into that um like seeing her son and being a bit kind of like horrified but then also like is he dead like kind of like i don't i, I want to know but i don't want to know I'm like holding myself back a little bit mm -hmm. um i thought that was done and really well acted as well yeah I thought Allison's entire storyline this episode was probably one of the more interesting storylines this episode. Yeah. And I, oh, yeah. I think Allison is also suspicious that Eamon did something to Aegon. And I yes. think, I mean, I think it starts in the first scene we see of them. She's standing beside Eamon and she looks down and Eamon has the dagger in his belt. And she like knows that was, Aegon's or Aegon would have had that with him yeah. so you know just starting with that and then her going to Kristen Cole and being like okay so what actually happened and all of that like yes. I think she's definitely a little suspicious and she said previously in like other episodes that she knows Aemon I, I don't know what word she says but like I don't know if she would say, oh, he's a monster, he's he's super aggressive or whatever, but she has said, like, you know what he is, you know what he's like, I can't control yeah. him. So I think, you know, she's aware that this is something that is within the realm of possibility that he would do, and she is kind of suspicious. She's suspicious, but also she's very much like, I lose more control with him, but also because she knows what he's like. Mm -hmm. He's a little bit of kind of more of a composed daemon. So he would be willing to do anything. And I'm kind of getting the impression she's like, he might not make a good king, which is why she put herself forward as queen. One, she wants to help keep more power. Two, I think she's a little bit kind of wanting not to really have Aemond on the throne, mm -hmm. even as a regent, because she's worried about stuff and then probably worried about what he would do to his brother, stuff like that. So that's coming through and everybody going no because you're a woman which the sexism which needs to be ranked up in this especially with with Rhaenyra because because then it makes like when Daenerys comes along later on it makes that more um impactful in in Game of Thrones um but especially all of that and then actually Damon take Damon Aemon's taking the throne for a bit and him just sitting there, not even putting himself forward, but everybody else putting himself forward. And then Kristen Cole actually siding with Aemond, which would be more of the correct thing to do because mm -hmm. Aemond would, especially in times of war, he would be the leader you would want. Um, but had that dissent between the two lovers there. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, I think a third reason Alison was putting herself forward is she knows like she they're going to war with her best friend well former best friend obviously they're not anymore <laughs> and yeah. i think in the previous episode you know we have seen her having second thoughts maybe some guilt and this has gone beyond anything that either of them can stop at this point like we there is war now and there's no taking that back but i think Alicent also is trying to, I'm going to say, like, steer the sinking ship. Like, she's still trying to have some control and be in charge somewhat over, like, this thing. This thing that she half caused, you know? And so I think yeah. there's that. Um, and as far as why did no one suggest Kristen Cole 
be the regents because they even say in that meeting they were like oh Kristen Cole you speak with the voice of the king what do you say on this matter I'm like if he speaks with the voice of the king why would he not rule in the king's stead yes I see your point but I think especially when you look at Eamon talking to Kristen Cole um, like being buddies with him outside of you know the small council I think they find Eamon a stronger king, so they'd probably put him forward rather than Chris and Carl. So they're probably doing it more for their own gains. I see your point, because the hand of the king would rule the realm, but there is also the brother who can also do it as well. And it's almost like, well, he's always, he's the regent. And then if Aegon dies, we already have a king. Because he's already running, there's not much you've got, you've got to change and do. He's already there, he's already running everything. So there's that kind of it. But I definitely think it's because um, Aegon's the weak king and Aemon isn't. That's true because Aemon and Kristen Cole were uh, pl plotting, planning together. So, yeah. And, and someone else already put him forward, and Kristen Cole's not going to be like, I should do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I do see, like, if Aegon dies, then Aemon is the next in line. So it's a, a more smooth transition of power, I guess. But if Aegon wakes up, then, like, Aegon's still king, so it doesn't matter who's ruling in his stead. Yeah. yeah. And it will be interesting to see what happens if he wakes up, because I don't know if Aemon will let him, or if the injuries will not end up killing him anyway what he will do and say because him suddenly waking up and saying my brother tried to kill me people are going to go are you really sure about that your grace are you sure this really happened and you know stuff like that and trying to play him off and then Alison will probably go like keep your mouth shut or he will try and kill you that kind of thing because Eamon's doing it because he took the piss Aegon took the piss out of Eamon and it's kind of and you could definitely especially like from the previous episode you can really see that and I'm kind of like yeah yeah I can definitely see Eamon having that ruthless and vengeful streak in him mm -hmm. to do that. So, mm -hmm. and like talking about it, this is what I love about how how this episode came together. Aemond didn't do a lot; he was hardly in it, but you could feel his presence so much throughout the show. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He definitely <laughs> is one of the characters. I feel like Aemond and Rhaenyra both have that quiet presence like they don't have to do a whole lot but they're just being there it's felt throughout like the episode and that was especially yeah. true of Rhaenyra in episode one because she said exactly one line and yet like her presence was felt in that episode yeah. and I feel like Eamon's the same way and I think it's good to have that on both sides of this war yes yes well, something, I just else, like yeah, something else about Eamon so after he's named regent and I know you don't like Helena, but <laughs> oh yes, oh, Helena I thought, comes I in and says, "Like, was it worth it? Was it worth the cost?" And I think that's very much okay. So Helena, Helena knows that Amon, yeah. what Amon did, and yeah. she's also telling Amon, "I know what you did." But what, what did, what cost, what price did Amon pay to get there, other than killing his so brother? So this. So this is also going back to what she said to Alicent of I forgive you. And it's kind of like, is it insinuating what happened or what is going to happen? It might be what's going to happen. It might be what's going to happen. Because nothing has really happened to Eamon. Uh -huh. Like he hasn't really suffered anything. Exactly. So that so that makes it because you wouldn't really say that it's worth was it worth the cost? It's like, oh yeah, of course, because I've not suffered anything, I've not been injured. Whereas in the future, it's like, was it worth the cost when like things were burning down and in shit and he's really suffering? And then he might be going, Oh, I don't know. So, which I find is really interesting and in how they're weaving that through there. I, I I definitely think that I definitely think that's where that's gonna go. It's very possible. Cause I did whenever she said that line, I was like, Well, obviously she knows what happened, but then the other thing was like but what cost it is there to yeah. aim it? Because, like, he doesn't yeah. like his brother, and he kills his brother, and he gets to be king. Like, what cost? 
Yeah. So yeah, yeah, no, that's a really good point. It could be what's going to happen in the future, which is even more exciting for the show because it's like, oh, what's going to happen? <laughs> I really hope it's going to be Damon and get Damon. Like, I think it's Caraxes, Damon's dragon uh-huh. against Vega. That would be wonderful because I feel like they are setting up parallels between those two characters. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Damon will soon end up dying, but I really hope it will be Vega who's gone because you can definitely see that. Like, as we said last episode, the, they're going to be thinking about Vega and they were a little bit with Rhaenyra and Jace. They were thinking about, you know, what they're going to do about Vega because he is just so big and powerful and, you know, the biggest dragon he needs to be taken care of. So I do really hope that um, they end up going with an Damon and Eamon fight because they're just, especially when you look back at season one, when like um, Eamon, I can't remember what you said, but it was Eamon said something and then uh, Jace and Luke were about to go forward, but Damon put his hand on them and stepped forward instead and they could just see them glare at each other. So I'm like, are you insinuating that something is eventually going to happen between those two? Because they've not really said any words, but you can kind of sense the animosity. Mm-hmm. So I'm holding out hope for that. I will say watching this episode, so I started a rewatch of season one before season two came out, but I haven't finished my rewatch and I haven't continued. I've just like not really had that much time between episodes to like mm. watch it on my, like, you know, continue my rewatch. But this episode made me go, I feel like I want to go back and rewatch season one because I feel yes. like there was a lot set up in season one that we're seeing the echoes of that in this episode. Yeah, I so feel like, the same. Yeah. Because yeah. so what like, I've been doing, I've just been trawling little clips on um, TikTok. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Back to season one. So that's how I'm like, oh, I remember this. Uh, rather than watching the whole season, but I might actually have to do that. But the issue is my internet's a bit funny. So... Um, sometimes I have to try and download it, which is a bit weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> although here, I'm house sitting, my internet's fine. It's just at home. Yeah. It's cool. So, but yeah, I do want to go back and rewatch it. But like you, when have I got the time? Right. <laughs> I don't know. I might just do my old uh, listen watch. There you go. And like, yeah. Watch it, li- watch it while I'm doing housework or something. <laughs> 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 all the time you think it's weird but it works although i think i will miss some stuff out from house of the dragon especially when you get like the looks and stuff but anyway right speaking of the dragon so if we want to jump to like jace's storyline yeah so um, the the one scene in this episode that I like kind of didn't care for. And I feel like it's very unpopular because I have seen people saying like, oh, the Jason Bela scene was like the best scene and they're so cute together and all of that. And it's like, I don't really, I guess, have a problem with like the way they acted that scene. Like, I think they're both good actors. I thought they did a good job in that scene, but the scene very much felt like exposition. It felt like we yes. need to tell the audience this. So let's yeah. have a scene where these two characters talk and tell it's the very, audience. Um, it's what I call Maiden Butler. Yeah. When I say I, oh, Brandon Sanderson called it Maiden Butler. I've just stolen yeah. that. But it's very much, oh, did you know? Oh, I never, you already know. The characters already know this. So it is very much that, but, you know, it's probably, it was shoehorned in a little bit. And I do think it could have been, it could have been better done. But, you know. Well, and, but also, I guess like, my problem too is like, Jace originally says, I'm going to go to Heron Hall and confront Damon, which like, okay, I don't, probably wouldn't have gone well, but, you know, not a terrible idea. And then he, in that scene, changes his mind and is like, no, I'm going to go talk to the phrase, which was, like, probably a better idea. But, like, it didn't feel like he would have just naturally come to that in that scene, in that moment, the way he did. So, so I was just kind of like, yeah, yeah. I mean, go ahead. My... My biggest issue is the Frey idea is so obvious. Why has nobody thought of it before? Like uh, the- you give it to you give it to this one character to make him look smart and everybody else look dumb, right? That's so. What I would much prefer, which is what Shadowverse said as well, which is you have the idea and you approach the face. They say no, right? Then Jay's comes up with an idea to overcome that. And ends up sacrificing something, maybe even himself, and kind of going, okay, I'll marry one of your kids or whatever. I don't fucking know. That would be a little bit too repetitive for Game of Thrones, but it's an idea. 
is in, it, isn't he already engaged to Bela? He might be. But it's just like, it's just stitballing an idea out there. So, uh-huh. so kind of like he comes up with an idea that then gets a phrase on their side rather than him approaching them first and asking. So and, and stuff like that. So well, and I would have also been conclusion. fine in that scene if like Bela was the one that said, Well, instead of going to Heron Hall, why don't you go talk to the phrase? Like the fact that it was Jace who acted like he just came up with it spur of the moment, like I didn't like that part. Yes. Yeah, I do see your point. Um I still think everybody else on the small council should have already come up with that idea. But and it's like when he comes back, Rhaenyra wasn't a- angry at it, at it. She was like right. kind of pleased right. about it. So I I'm thought like, she was gonna be mad. <laughs> yeah. I thought she was like, there must be a reason why, because it's a, it's a good idea, is what I would have done. Like, the first thing you do, you have an army in the north, you can't get it south, how do you get it south? Oh, the crossing at the phrase. Okay, how can we get... Even if you kind of sit a dragon outside the phrase and let the Starks cross, and, like, threatening the, the phrase, like, if you fight this army, I'll burn your city, right? Or maybe that, that would have been them the whole time. They're like, we don't need to negotiate with them, yes, we can just... Well, I don't, I, I don't think it was because they kept going on about they don't have a ground army, but they do have one in the north. So they weren't even saying that they don't have a ground army. It was kind of like they don't have it in the, in the right place. So I, I just generally don't think it was even thought of. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I do think it, it should have been. But what I do like is Jace's idea about finding other Targaryens. Mm-hmm. I think... That's a good idea. And Rhaenyra kind of going, well, would the dragons accept him? Would it work? You know, because even a full-blooded Targaryen sometimes struggles with dragons. Because sometimes dragons go, fuck you. I mean, it's a fucking dragon. It would. Yeah. And you'd be terrified. But that's what I love <laughs> about these dragons. Yeah. Because like they are, they do seem like creatures of their their own. They are like wild animals. And yes, they bond with their dragon rider. And we see that with like Rhaenys and Maelys and all of that. Like, yes, it's great whenever they have that bond, but they also are still wild animals. And I love that about these yeah. dragons. Well, also what's good about, about the dragons is like you look at Vega, right? Um, Vega was there on the conquest from Queen Alicine, something like that. I can't, there's Elise and Alicine, there's so many. Um, with Aegon's, he, she, he was his first wife, so already he's 100 years old, and then he's gone from different riders, as he's oh, he, she has you know gone through life, so obviously, and then obviously claimed Aemon claimed the dragon as his own. Um, so there's that in play as well. So the dragon can lose a rider, but it doesn't necessarily mean the dragon's out of action. You just find it another rider, mm-hmm. which you know would would be would be interesting. But but this also leads back to the thread they put through from the guy in in the tavern saying he's a Targaryen. Oh, that's true. And we're still getting threads of the story, mm-hmm. and. You know, looking after the sick kid, just being stuck in King's Landing, all of this happening, and that. Do you think he's going to be our own, dragon rider? I think he's got a role to play because they're showing us, they're making us care about the character, especially when they're like, "Oh, such and such has promised me gold." I think it was one of the Targaryens. It's promised gold and stuff like that, and uh, it's not gonna. And, and then his wife is like well you're believing in empty promises you know and their daughter's dying so you know, they're threading this through and making us care which makes you think he is going to have a role to play it's just how significant it will be a slightly significant role but i'd be curious to see if he's on green or black i, I feel like he has to be on black because he was trying to escape the city and yeah, so that's a good point. I definitely, obviously, he has a role to play, and I just don't know what it is yet. I don't feel like they've done a sufficient enough job making me care about the character, because whenever he's on screen, like, obviously, I know we're following this character because he's going to be important later, but I don't care about him now, and I'm whenever we're watching, I just kind of feel like, why are we watching this character? I see. The, the way I, I think it's working is because they're making us 
care about his daughter, which makes us care about how he's going to feel as a father. So we don't fully invest in him yet, but it's the little bits of threads that I think as we go through and he starts having a more of an impact, we'll slowly see that, oh, OK, and it might just be that little tipping point that makes him decide, oh, I will ride your dragon. Mm -hmm. I feel like his scenes are going to be better in rewatch like once we get through and I assume he's going to have an important role in this season so I think even just like rewatching after the season's over I feel like his scenes are going to be better but just like right now I'm kind of like well obviously we're leading up to something or we're trying to build something over here it's just like it hasn't quite worked for me yet (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very much what I call layering in writing. It's sort of you foreshadow and you layer this to then you get to this point. And you're like, oh, my God, it means this. And you mm-hmm. don't see it. until You get to that point. That's what I think is definitely going to happen with this. And I'll be interested to see how far they're going to go, because I think in the next episode, they'll probably try and do like a time jump kind of thing. And then looking for Targaryens or having found some descendant of Targaryens that married into different families. And being like, let's try. And some might fail, some might die, because obviously dragons. But it'd be interesting to see if she could get more dragons on her side and how that would then go. Yeah, definitely. Something else, like, I feel like this is another scene that has echoes of season one because they talk about Reyna trying to bond with a dragon and almost dying. But I've kind of gotten the impression from Reyna that Reyna wishes she could bond with a dragon, wants to bond with the dragon, even whenever they're sending off the dragon eggs. Like Reyna, now two of the dragons have hatched, so maybe Reyna could bond with one of them. But like, I kind of got the impression that like Reyna wants that because she even like kind of looked at the eggs longingly. Maybe I'm reading into something that's not there. But Rhaenyra just like dismisses even... Raina attempting again. I think what it is, she's worried about Raina. Raina is still, I think she's the like quite young still. But the way I look at it is to bond a dragon, you've gotta have that fire. And I don't think she does. That's fair. And I think you've, you know, don't show any fear. So I mean, if you show fear, it's the same with any kind of animal, which is the same with horses. Like, if you suddenly back off and they're coming at you, they're like, oh, I've got you. And they can pin you. And I've been chased around the field by the horse. So, <laughs> you know, and there's, there's tricks you, you can do. And I think it's the same with that sort of how the magic relies on it a little bit. It is blood of the dragon. But it's also you need to be strong enough to be able to tame, not even tame, but like have these dragons listen to you and what, what you want. And to sort of, okay, yeah, you're strong enough. I will listen and bond with you and stuff like that. That's mm-hmm. why I look at it. That's a good point. And that kind of also, I guess, was echoed in this season with the conversation between Bela and Corliss, which yeah. one of it. my favorite scenes in the show. I fucking like the granddaughter and just kind of like giving him the box, right? And him, you know, having the conversation and, and, uh, him going, I want to make you my heir, and he's go- and then she went, I'm fire and blood. Uh, driftwood needs salt and sea. Loved it. I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, absolutely yeah. loved it. But even even whenever they were talking about um the the her grandmother and all of that and like them both dealing with grief, like oh my gosh, I just loved that scene so much. It was probably my was so favorite well in this the episode. Yeah. Like, yeah, one of my favorites. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, and and like the those two acting together, just it went so well. It's you know persuading him to take the hand without actually saying you need to take it, just talking, mm-hmm. and then talking about her grandmother as well when he probably doesn't really want to talk about it, being the typical bloke of I'm not going to talk about my feelings, and then she's kind of going, you know, she was my grandmother too, and like you know I I miss her as well and stuff like this. It was just it, oh, yeah. Like I think this episode had some of the best scenes oh, so yeah. far. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, individual scenes like that, absolutely. I am curious what it means, I'm going to say, in world for Bela to give up the, no, I'm not going to be your heir. Like, what does that mean for Bela going forward? Because, like, that seems like it would be a desirable desirable position, particularly for a woman. Uh, Yes, but I also think that because she's got 
dragon and oh, she's awesome. obviously with Rhaenyra she's kind of like I can't take it even if she wanted it she's like I can't rule Driftmark it's on the sea I have a dragon um they're at war there's all sorts of things going on so I think she's like I can't rule it um I think his bastard son will that's a good point that's a very good think, point he probably I think he will, will come up. yeah, yeah. And, I mean, the other thing with Bela, too, is if Rhaenyra wins the war, then Bela will probably have, like, a prominent position in King's Landing somewhere. And if they don't win the war, then she's screwed either way because she, like, sided yeah. with Rhaenyra. So, yeah, that's that's a good point. Maybe she's not actually risking that much by saying, I don't want Driftmark. Yeah. yeah. Talking of Targaryens. Mm-hmm. What is Rhaenyra doing? Like, uh, in the previous episode, they led her up to believe that she, all bets were off and she was going to be ruthless and going to really commit to the war and then she's being wishy-washy in this one. Yeah, I mean, I think they were trying to lead to the scene at the end between Rhaenyra and Jace, which I also thought was a really... The scenes between Rhaenyra and Jace this season, I have really liked. Oh, yeah. Like I said, yeah. I did... I was surprised Rhaenyra was not mad at Jace. But I think overall their conversation of Rhaenyra saying, I also want to go out and do like I want to act, but like I'm the queen and I can't basically. Like I do think that was a good conversation for them to have. Uh, yes. But I, I definitely see, yeah. Like what, what, what they're coming across with, it's kind of like I'm a woman, I can't do anything, can't do this. I get that. My issue is she is meant to be really fucking ruthless. And she's not being ruthless. She's being too cautious at the moment. That, which that's, I'm not, fair. that's fair. I, kind I of mean, I feel that. like her sending one of the council members to Heron Hall to confront Damon is going is going to cause things in the future. So but I mean I see your point. Is like we have just had like episode after episode where Rainier is not really like taking charge and being like we're gonna go do this now so i guess like both Rhaenyra and damon kind of seem like we're just seeing them sit around yeah and it's, she's not really making any choices and she's still believing in like her husband will come back and give her what she wants and then she does come with the conclusion of okay maybe he's not so she sends somebody there to, to discover it um which is also a clever ploy to get him out of the way so he's not obviously always coming back on the council which could also be a thing and he even says that oh, and yeah. she says no she says no I'm oh, just she's... kind of like I think I think she says no but she means yeah kind of <laughs> yeah yeah I mean you would wouldn't you um, but I just kind of want that little bit more of well they've taken my cousin I think it was they've taken Renice and the dragon now we really need to act before they recover because obviously Aegon is, um, you know, dead, alive. They don't know. Mm -hmm. Then there's Aemon, then there's Vagar. They're like, well, well, when they recover, they will strike at Rhaenyra pretty quick. So it's kind of like, we need to do something. And I kind of wanted a bit more of like that kind of going on. And her being like, very much like just being completely ruthless and just taking everything. But it's not so. Yeah, I, I totally think it fits with what we've, like, I'm going to say her being ruthless, like what we saw of her character in season one leading up to this, like, I feel like it, it is about time she does something. I think they didn't want that for this episode. And I think they wanted yeah. like a, a calmer episode after our last episode. So oh, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I'm holding out. Like, I totally see your point. Okay. Yeah. But I'm holding out hope that like that's to come. I am holding out hope that is going to come. But my biggest thing that I really want, Damon and Vega fight. With I Damon. would love to see that. I would. I'd, just, I'd give my firstborn for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just I want to see I have, it. I've not read the book. I have no idea what's coming. I think that's what should happen. <laughs> I really do. I really hope I can get through that section because it's quite a big section of the book that House Dragon is based off on before the end of the show. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I know how it ends, and I can be like, oh my god, 
and then seeing how how they're going to play it out. But other than, but to be fair, like episode four, episode five, really, really enjoying it, really loving this last episode. My favorite of the so far, and I'm hoping it is only going to go up because they'll probably build and build with the small little, probably little things that will have like a maybe slightly explosive ending, but then with a massive one towards the end. So build up for the next episode, calm down, then build up again. Yeah. Because I've only got three more episodes. Mm-hmm. Yay. Which is like... <laughs> we're almost, we're almost to like, oh, how, how are they going to end this? I'm so excited for the end of the, like seeing where the yeah. end of the season goes. Where yeah. the end of the season lands. Because obviously yes. we get more story after this. Yes. I'm curious to how many seasons I'll do because I was spoiled online I know uh, a little bit of what happens it's quite brutal um, so I kind of have an inkling on how it's going to end but I want to know how do we get to that point and how many seasons are going to be there to get to that point because they might have added some stuff in to pad it out a little bit uh, I don't know I'll have to read it to find out but I'm looking forward to it I yeah, I think that is a great place to end this. So if you're interested in watching our previous episode discussions, I have them all in, all in a playlist, which I will have linked. And I hope to see you in another video. Happy reading.